Hey guys, so this week we have a city apron, curb, and sidewalk. The customer is wanting to enlarge it and center it with their driveway. Stick around for the excavation, the prep, two pours on this one. And hopefully you guys like what you see. Thanks for clicking on the video. Subscribe. See you guys then. Before getting into any of the apron, sidewalk, or curb, we had to cut out a section of her driveway. Um, the customer knew that the apron was gonna be larger, so she wanted to make sure that the edge closest to this tree not only lined up with the house, but the driveway would only go out that far uh, as the new edge of the apron. So we cut this section out. She was gonna scoot the fence over. We broke it out. It had rebar in it, but it wasn't too impossible to get out with that 85. Uh, once we broke that out, then we were able to get started on the city work. So there's many things that I like about city work. Uh, one of the things that I don't like is you need to always expect it to come out really thick. Um, at a minimum, these curbs and aprons should always be around six inches. Sometimes the company before when we do our work, the original company that poured whatever we're tearing it out will tend to overdo it. Uh, the curb in this area came out 10 inches thick. It shouldn't have been that overly thick. I'm glad we had that new breaker on the 85. It didn't have hardly any trouble, actually none at all, getting through that um, 10 inch thick curb. But either way, that is one of the downsides of doing what we do. There is always a, the good part that we know that city work doesn't have um, rebar in it, at least in the, the uh, residential areas. When you get into commercial drives and businesses, you'll probably find some for sure. But uh, that's one of the things I don't like about working on uh, city work. 
Also, before going forward, apart from the inspections we get prior to every pour, we had to get with the arbor division since we were getting closer to this tree. We had to make sure that they were okay with us expanding the concrete closer to that tree. <laughs> Another important detail when it comes to city work in our city, um, you need to cut out two feet of asphalt on the outside of the curb that you take out. Uh, usually you cut it out, bury your blade, you haul away what's there. Usually it'll come out between three to four inches thick. In this case it was about four inches. Uh, you clean out the area, you pour your concrete, and you come back the next day and you bring in some good old hot asphalt. Um, you put a little bit of emulsion, which is liquid asphalt, around the perimeter so that your new asphalt, when it's placed in, will bind. You compact it in. Um, in our case, we use our truck, we roll over it, and then we use a plate compactor, spray a little bit of water so the compactor doesn't stick, and then we use some crack filler around the edge of that new, uh, I guess, line that's left afterwards so that plants don't grow through and the inspectors tend to be really happy with that some people try and get away with not replacing the two feet we like doing it anyway since it just adds for a really clean look between our new curb and the new asphalt that we end up doing it isn't much more to do but it is an extra step that's very important in uh, what we do when it comes to city right of way Hey guys, Joe from J&M Conquer here. So we got everything excavated. We got the curb framed, wings are in, sidewalk is framed. All that's left is the inspection and the pour. We'll see you guys on pour day. Thanks guys. All right guys, inspector gave us a thumbs up. We're good to pour. Let's see, hopefully that all goes well. See you then guys. Whenever we pour curb for the city, we have to absolutely make sure that it's poured at a low slump. Uh, that's also an important detail. It's not anywhere in writing, but it's an important detail to make sure that you can uh, stand up that curb head and uh, have it uh, look good after you pull your form off. Yeah. 
One small detail I didn't like about this pour is we had exactly enough concrete as in just a few shovels left and we should normally have a quarter to a half a yard left so I was really uncomfortable when we scraped off the buggy and had just enough for the job which was cool but shouldn't be that way. Hey guys, pour went well, everything came out good. There it is. We got our cure on there. Looking really good. All that's left now is to come back tomorrow, prep the apron in between, and then we're pouring on Friday. Let's hope Inspector gives us a thumbs up on that too. I think he will. Hopefully you guys liked what you've seen so far. Thanks guys, see you then. Oh, and we're also doing the asphalt. Can't forget that part now. See you guys then. All right guys, so what we're doing here is we're spraying the bed off with diesel in cases where we get our asphalt doesn't have any uh, special liquid that goes in here. It might also be diesel, but this is so your asphalt won't stick to the bed of whatever you're carrying your asphalt with. So that's what I'm doing guys, just spraying my bed off so it doesn't stick too bad and it'll come off easier, especially with the ball right here in the center. So an important part to the whole asphalt deal, as you're gonna see here soon, is we need to get it from the plant here as quickly as possible so that we can get it on the ground very quick, get it compacted. It doesn't cool very fast, but you wanna make sure that it's on your truck, on the ground, and then you go dump whatever's left over at the dump site as quickly and as efficiently as possible. There's lots of steps and lots of... 
As you can see here, my super advanced roller, the truck, since it's loaded and very heavy, we roll it back and then we put a little layer and then top it off and finish it up with the compactor and a little bit of water. I would say that this is basically the easiest kind of pour a concrete company can do. A cement truck will normally reach it all. Um, you're just going from point A to point B on your rod. You got to make sure it's finished well. But uh, pouring an apron in between a curb and a sidewalk is about as easy as it gets, guys. It's still fun, but it's easy. Quiero hacerle yo el intento unos días comprar uno de estos, pero de los anchotes, de estos normales, ¿va? Yo he visto que hay unos que, que aprendiéndoles sí se avienta bien machine. Well, there it was, guys. Uh, they're putting the final broom on it. 
The only last step that's really important to all this is spraying it with some white cure so that it cures real well. We got that out in there. Uh, no one stepped on our concrete after any of the pours. We went back the next day and it all cured really, really nice. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I just wanted to show people how many steps are involved in doing a simple right away like this. That's why city work is so expensive. Hey guys, Joe from JM Concrete here. Pour went well, poured at 9 a.m. Inspector gave us the thumbs up. And there it is, guys. We poured a 4,000 city mix and got that cure on there. I mean, pretty simple. What do you guys think? So, a few things about the city that you always got to have, at least where we work you need your five and a half foot wings, you need to make sure that there is a half inch lip up by the curb. Thickness is always six inches thick. Um, they don't allow rebar, at least on residential drives. Apart from that, there it is, guys. Thanks for clicking on the video. Have a good day, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.